Quarantine, day nine. Not only is it quarantine day nine, but my wife and I are also moving homes in like one week. So it's a bit of a cluster shit in here, if you couldn't tell by the boxes and the boxes and the toilet paper because everybody needs toilet paper right now, specifically. Okay, let's jump to this camera and uh, let's start this video. Uh, also, quick disclaimer, I know the thing is happening with everybody that supposedly demonetizes videos. A uh, couple things. One, if you hear me sniffling and sneezing, that is because I have terrible allergies and the world is yellow here in Atlanta, Georgia. Two, this video is sponsored by Simply Safe, and we will talk about those guys in a minute. But thank you, Simply Safe, for sponsoring this video and helping me get through this terrible, terrible section of allergy stuff. But anyway, to uh, we got an MT10 to build up, guys. All right, guys, so if you're like me, you probably just got a 2019 MT10, or you're interested in how I'm gonna build my MT10 out. Now, Yamaha has truly blessed us with an amazing motorcycle that has a phenomenal engine, it's very comfortable to ride, and it is super quick, but I think the true beauty in what Yamaha has created in their MT10 is that they have created a platform that you can make into plenty of stuff. So you can modify it to make it best for the type of writing that you do. So since I'm in quarantine, hashtag day nine, getting through it strong. Uh, since I'm in quarantine, I can't order parts because no places are even, no way's working right now. So I figured, let me plan out what I want to do to the bike that way when all the quarantine stuff ends then I can get my parts ordered and I can do all the mods I want and take you guys through the build process. Side note if I make a video telling you guys what I plan on doing it and one of you guys have an MT10 and you see one of the parts I want to put on you're like nah bruh don't do that this is the video to do that in the comments so if you're in the comments and you see one of the parts I talk about that I want to put on the 2019 MT10 behind me if you've already put it on and it looks like trash or it doesn't work well, please let me know. I've never modified an MT-10. I've never worked on an MT-10, so I don't know what's good and what's not. So little heads up would really help a brother out. Speaking of help a brother out, drop a like in the below thing because that helps, that helps YouTube let them know that they need to show this video to other people. Thank you for letting me know about the parts. Much more thank you for liking the video. Okay, let's get to it. Okay, so uh, when I'm looking at how I want to build out this MT-10, I have three areas that I want it to be really good in, and I wanna kinda get mods for it that can it do good in each of those areas separately, I'll explain. First area is a track day. I would love at some point to take this bike to the track because if you guys don't know, the engine inside the MT-10 is actually from the R1 and it's just modified and tuned down. So I think it would be amazing, I know it would be amazing on the track, but there's a couple performance modifications that I would really like to get before we take this thing on to a track. So performance modifications are really what I'm gonna be focusing on for the track spec. Second type of build thing for the MT-10 is multi-day touring. Now again, engine in this thing is a monster. It has cruise control, has a super comfortable seat, but there's a better one. So for a multi-day touring situation, what I'm gonna be looking at adding is stuff to carry clothes, for me, camera gear and stuff like that, so I don't have to carry it on my back. I have a terrible back, so like wearing a book bag with literally like just this camera in it when I ride around with it, if I ride around for more than like four hours, my back starts hurting, so I'm not really able to utilize a book bag, so I'm definitely gonna want to figure out some sort of storage because motorcycles, they don't have, if you didn't know, they, they don't have storage. All right, so the third and final way I wanna make this bike is for what I probably will be using it for the most, and that's mountain riding. Now, depending on what part of the country you're in, this could be, you know, hill riding or backcountry riding, but mountains are the type of riding I like doing and I would love to do at least two weekends a month. You know, like go up to the mountains and just, what that entails is highway for two hours, ride around real technical roads, and then highway home. So with the mountain setup being this kind of like love child between the race setup and the long touring setup, 
I feel like I can mix and match the parts that I get for both of those setups and kind of make my perfect mountain setup. And that way, that'll be where the bike always sits. It'll always be in mountain setup. And then if I'm gonna do a long distance touring, maybe throw a couple extra parts on. If I'm gonna do a race or something, not a race, a track day, I ain't racing nothing. But if I'm gonna do a track day, take some stuff off, put those on. So with all that being said, let's get into the parts that I've kind of got an idea for that I think that would make this bike amazing for the specific user cases, the three that we have. Track day, long-term, traveling, and mountain. Okay, so I've done some research on the parts that are available and the basic places I looked at were Revzilla and Yamaha. Yamaha actually has a ton of parts that they actually offer for the motorcycle. Also, don't tell anybody. What I'm gonna do is see how many of those parts I can get from Yamaha and that way your boy can save some cash and put that cash towards some of these more race mods that are uh, not, ch we'll, we'll say they're not cheap anyway back to the race mods. So when it comes to race mods, what we're looking for is maybe dropping weight, adding some easy customization for like foot pegs and stuff like that, or doing a performance upgrade. So sometimes that can be really expensive and sometimes you can get that for a good deal. So let's go through the items that I've kind of got on my want list for the race mods. And I'm gonna let you guys know if I'm getting them from Yamaha or if I'm gonna get them from Revzo. So here's the list. Now the first modification I'm looking at for the MT-10 are Litec rear sets. So currently we've got the stock rear sets on the bike and we've used Litec rear sets in some of the rec bike rebuild bikes before like the, our little 40,000, little $40,000 Panigale we're giving away. We've got Litec rear sets on there and I've been super impressed with those things. I'm pretty sure they're a relatively new company but the quality of those things is absolutely solid. Unfortunately, the cost reflects the quality. Next up, I'm probably gonna be looking at removing the rear passenger pegs because if I'm in a race situation, I want the bike to be as light as possible and I'm not gonna have anybody on the back of the motorcycle. So I'm gonna get those off, but I'm not gonna throw them away because I wanna hold on to them just in case I wanna do a long touring setup mode where I bring my wife along. I wanna be able to do that. So I'm gonna take the passenger pegs off, but put them aside and maybe put them into the long distance touring mode. Long distance touring mode pile because essentially I'm just gonna have piles of parts and then depending on what thing I wanna go do with the bike, I just put, you know, put those parts on. Anyway, moving on. Next up is pretty standard. I wanna upgrade the chain and the sprockets to a lighter setup. Not really sure how much I'm gonna gain from that, but I always like having a new chain and sprocket, even though the ones on here are basically new. Might save some money and not upgrade that right now. Unless you guys have a good idea for chain and sprockets. Are there like a super lightweight or a race version? Let me know in the comments down below. I told you guys, I'm probably gonna sneeze in this video, and I feel like it's coming. It's not the you know what, it's just allergies. But... Okay, it's gone, sweet, oh God. Next up on the race set is a new exhaust. Now, I'm not gonna talk about what exhaust I have, though, when I was out riding with the MT-10 with Yamaha, a dude rolled past in an MT-10 with an Akropovic exhaust, or Akropovic, Akropovic, whatever you wanna call it, Acro. He rolled past with an Acro exhaust, and it sounded mwah absolutely gorgeous and it looked really cool so i don't know if i'm going to go with acro but i'm talking with a company and we might do some funky stuff with the exhaust so an exhaust upgrade definitely going to happen to like unleash the engine along with upgrading the exhaust we are also going to be tuning the motorcycle because if you're putting a full exhaust on a motorcycle ever on any motorcycle you have to get the bike tuned the bike is not made to do a different exhaust. So make sure you get your bikes tuned. We will be tuning the MT-10 with a new exhaust. Is the stays coming? <laughs> oh, yep, it did. Okay, cool. Okay, so next item up for the upgrade list for the race setup is upgraded brake pads. I recently had a company reach out to me, these dudes actually, SBS. Now I've never used SBS before, but supposedly they're a big deal name in brake pads and they sent me out some brake pads that are supposedly really good for the MT-10 specifically for initial bite. So I'm gonna be installing those, I've got them over here, but also, you know, with the whole move and everything, we ain't gonna do any of these modifications till after we move in like a week. So I'm gonna be installing some new brake pads because obviously when you're in a race setup, Braking is super important. Regardless of how much you like using engine braking like me, you're gonna need to use the brakes on track day. So, gonna be installing those. Now, like I said, in a track day situation, you're gonna be going faster, you're gonna be braking faster. So you are gonna be slightly more 
prone to maybe laying your bike down. You know what I mean? So something super important to do at track days is to get engine sliders for your motorcycle. So that way, if your bike does go down, you have the best chance of your bike not getting seriously damaged and then having to spend all this money. So sliders are something that I find super important if I'm gonna do a track down on a motorcycle. For the MT-10, I plan on doing frame sliders, front wheel sliders, rear wheel sliders, and engine cased covers. And all of that is going to be a protective package to make sure that your bike stays safe. Trust me, you don't wanna to have to replace the engine cases because those are crazy freaking expensive if you have to do that. It's much cheaper to just get a new engine case slider or a frame slider, those are way cheaper. It's gonna make this little protective barrier around your motorcycle just in case something bad happens. Now, I would be really terrible at my job if I didn't somehow segue from protecting the motorcycle to protecting your home with Simply Safe. So now, hold with me while we talk about Simply Safe real quick. I just thought of something hilarious and I, I hope you guys appreciate it. <laughs> One second, before we transition to the other stuff. can't read it. We're going to segue to the Simply Safe ad. Sweet. And I know you guys want the review on this thing and it's coming, just the weather is terrible. Oh God, wrong way. Simply Safe is an easy to use customizable home security system that is free from contracts and hidden costs. They also just upgraded their system and are now half the size as before and that are each nearly double the range with five times faster speeds. It's incredibly effective, reliable home security that will make sure your home is safe and is really easy to use. Now, hopefully you don't experience a break-in, but if and when there is one, Simply Safe's alarms receive the highest priority police dispatch. Because their security specialists provide real eyewitness evidence to the police department, the Simply Safe specialists can notify the police of an intruders in the house, if they're armed, and what they're doing, which results in up to 3.5 times faster dispatches and more crime stopped. Simply Safe protects your entire home inside and out. Outside, the video doorbell and HD cameras alert you to anyone approaching your home and the smart locks and entry sensors guard the perimeter. Inside, a layer of motion plus glass break sensors plus some privacy protecting cameras provide another layer of protection. The system is equipped with work case scenarios and will still work even if you lose power, Wi-Fi, or if the system is attacked. Plus, Simply Safe protects your home from fires, water damage, carbon dioxide, and more. Simply Safe is the number one expert recommended home security, and even police departments use it across the country. And even 3 million people rely on Simply Safe every day, which is no surprise since Simply Safe is only 50 cent a day and it doesn't have any contracts. Setting up the system is super simple, and adding new sensors takes no time at all. They all talk with this base station, which I have just set up in my office. My favorite unit is the video doorbell. With my wife and I currently trying to sell our house, we've been able to monitor the showings when the real estate agents comes to show the house. That way, when they leave, we can come home right afterwards, which has been super helpful. We also just got this box of new sensors in for the new house, which includes the new Simply Safe lock. The lock makes your home more secure by ensuring it's always locked. The Simply Safe lock is designed so that you can make sure your door is locked even when you forget to lock it. It can automatically lock on a timer, as well as when you arm your system. Unlocking the door actually disarms the system, which is going to be really nice and super handy when you just want to answer the door and you don't have to do that added step of disarming the system. You're also able to get alerts anytime somebody locks or unlocks your door so that way you know when the kids come home from school or a contractor leaves for the day and with having a couple projects we plan on getting done in the new house whenever we move in this lock is going to come in super handy for sure. You can even give access codes to people so you know exactly who came and went. These access codes can be adjusted anywhere that you have access to the internet for you to give new codes to get visitors like dog walkers you can even lock or unlock your home remotely so if you guys are in the market for a much better home security system check out simply safe with my link in the description it's simplysafe.com slash chase that's simplysafe.com slash c-h-a-s-e huge shout out to you guys that actually use that link because not only do you help protect your home but you also help me out a ton as well so big shout out to you guys that actually use that link and it is a huge help if you guys actually click that link down below if you're looking for home safety stuff. I trust it, I would trust it with you guys. And uh, that's, that's about it. Okay, blue line over, back to the mods.
So wrapping up the track mods that I'm looking at, uh, obviously I want to do new levers. Uh, we've got the stock levers on the bike right now, which aren't bad. The brake one is adjustable, but I'm not personally a big fan of stock levers though. So I'm going to be looking at getting some CRG RC2 levers. I like the way those feel on the bikes we've put those on, so I'm gonna go with those on this one. k &N also makes an, a race air filter. They have a regular air filter and a race air filter for the MT-10. I think I'm gonna grab that because it shouldn't be that hard to change out, and from what Brian's told me, changing out the air filter is actually a pretty big deal. So definitely gonna be doing that. And that's probably gonna be the air filter we use, period. I'm not gonna be changing out the air filter depending on you know doing tractor long-term touring. Now, as far as the big purchase for a track day setup for this motorcycle is probably going to be the rear shock. Now, you guys, if you're into motorcycles, you know who Olin's is. Olin's makes the top, top, top level of suspension. And something the MT line typically doesn't do well is suspension. So I think a rear shock would be phenomenal replacement for the stock shock that the current bike has on it. That being said, it is a pretty penny to get that stuff. So glad this video is sponsored. So rounding out the track setup for this bike, I'm looking at a race windscreen. So it's not gonna be some big touring thing cause that's gonna block too much air, but it's just gonna add this like small fairing up front or a windscreen up front. So that way I can tuck in on a long straight, air can go over me. And the final thing is an integrated tail light. It gets all that gross shit off the back of the motorcycle and then put your blinkers inside the rear light, which I love and I pretty much have done on any motorcycle that I've ever owned. So integrated tail light, absolutely clutch modification. Something else I saw on Revzilla that you can get for the MT-10 and something we used on season two's Rec Bike Rebo bike, the ZX-10, is a LiTeX chain adjuster. And it just is this little thing you add on your swing arm that allows you to much easier adjust your chain if you needed to like let some slack in or out of the chain. When we installed them on the ZX-10 back in the day, I love those things. And I said in the video, the second I get a motorcycle that I can install these on, I'm definitely going to. So LiTeX chain adjusters are definitely something that this thing's gonna be getting. All right guys, so moving on, let's talk about the mods for highway and long distance touring. These modifications are gonna focus on making the bike more comfortable to ride, easier to ride on the highway for long distances, and storage. Those are gonna be the three main things all the modifications in this group are gonna help us do. Now here in Georgia, we don't really have that cold of weather, but in the dead of winter, when it gets rough, it would be nice to have heated grip sometimes. So, or who knows, maybe I take this motorcycle on a cross country tour and I'm gonna run into some really cold weather. So regardless, I'd like to have heated grips there just in case I need them. I'd rather have them and not need them than need them and not have them. Heated grips, definitely something I wanna to add to the bike. They're also really helpful because if you guys see, this motorcycle doesn't have any sort of protection for your hands on the highway. If you're gonna be riding this on the highway for a long time in cold temperatures, you got a lot of wind hitting your hands. So heated grips are gonna come in clutch if you're doing long distance highways in the cold. Next up is a radiator guard. Now we've all been riding on the highway, maybe behind some big old truck and you're just riding and out of nowhere, a freaking boulder comes out and smacks you in the face and you're sitting there thinking to yourself, wow, I'm really glad I have a helmet on. Well, imagine what if one of those big rocks came up on the highway because you're already going at a high speed, comes up, hits your radiator, punctures it, and now you got coolant dropping everywhere. So a radiator guard is honestly there to protect your radiator on the highway. Yamaha has a cool one that says like MT-10 on it. It looks cool, it's black, it darkens that area out underneath it, so I really like it. And it's not really that expensive and shouldn't be that hard to install. Now next up, we're gonna move into the storage category. And the main thing you can do for a motorcycle for storage are saddlebags. So obviously this motorcycle doesn't have saddlebags on it, so you have to get these side brackets that allow for you to slide saddlebags onto the motorcycle. These are gonna be what you put your clothes in, your gear, if you're like me and you ride around with camera gear, or anything like that, and they're gonna slide on the side. You can also get a top rack for the motorcycle that goes on the top of the seat, but I'm not really a fan of the look of those, so I would rather only have just the two saddlebags, 
This also makes it to where if my wife and I were ever riding the motorcycle, I wouldn't have to worry about taking the top case off so that she could sit there. So I'm just gonna go the two saddlebag situation because I don't really see myself needing anything more than that. And if I come to that point in the, down the road where I need a top case and saddlebags, I can add those on later on. But for now, we gotta add the side brackets to where you can put the saddlebags on and they can be really secure while you ride. Now, when it comes to what saddlebags to use, this is an area where I really don't know what I'm really doing, but Yamaha offers these, and I'm gonna go with them just to kind of get my feet wet in the situation. If you guys have an empty tent or if you've got any other Yamaha where you've used saddlebags before, let me know if you use one pair or the other, and let me know which ones are best. I, Like I said, I've really never done long distance touring where I needed saddlebags, so I don't really have a lot of information there, so we'll kind of just see how it goes. And if you guys have a better recommendation in the comments, who knows, I might go with that one. So next up in the long distance touring, we're going to be on the highway probably for a long period of time. And when I saw that Yamaha offers a comfort seat for the MT-10, I'm like, bruh, I'm there. So I'm gonna get the comfort seat because I've ridden the Nikon GT and it had the comfort seat and dude, I could ride to the mountains and back with no problem whatsoever. And it was super freaking comfortable. So if the MT-10 comfort seat is anything close to the comfort seat on the Nikon GT, I am totally here for it. And it is a welcomed addition to make yourself comfortable on long distance trips. So speaking of long-term riding on the highway and trying to be comfortable, this is where there's a solution for the MT-10 because as you guys can tell on the front, there's really no wind protection. Now, if you guys remember with the race setup, we're gonna get this little like race fairing or waist, waist windscreen up front so that you can tuck in and have some sort of a bubble. But on the highway, you don't wanna be tucked in on the highway the whole time. So they actually make these monster sized windscreens for the MT-10. Now I don't wanna go monster sized because this is a windscreen that I'm probably gonna to wanna to put on my mountain setup and I don't want the bike to look like some crazy looking triceratop situation. But luckily they make like a little medium height windscreen for the MT-10 which should be good for general use purposes because right now on the highway there is a ton of wind especially if you get a little throttle happy. But I was pretty happy seeing this little middle height windscreen, so I'm gonna go with that one and maybe I'll get a super big one. So, you know, if I need to travel or something like that, I can be like, dude, I'm throwing the Triceratops on. So I'm, I'm gonna go with the middle windscreen at first. We'll see how it goes. And then if I ended up needing the super tall one, maybe we go with that. We'll uh, address that down the road though. So the next up is something that I think is super cool. You guys have probably heard me talk about electric cars and bikes and I'm all here for the electric revolution at some point in time. But for now, I'm gonna enjoy the hell out of this R1 engine. But they make a solar power battery tender. Now, if you guys don't know what a battery tender is, if you're gonna park your bike for a long period of time, a battery tender will charge your battery up. Now, if you're on the road for a period of time, you don't really have that access. And what happens if your battery dies on the side of the road or something? They make a solar power battery tender that you can you know, get the little battery tender plugs for your bike. And they make this little solar panel that you can put on your bike to help charge your battery in a time where maybe it's really cold outside and you wake up one morning, your bike doesn't wanna crank up and you need to add like a little charge to the bike to get it cranked up. <laughs> I love the idea of having a solar power battery tender with me I don't ever see myself using it, but I would love if I ever had to and I had it. So solar power battery tender is definitely gonna go into the saddlebags for the long distance touring mode on this bike. Now I'm not gonna lie, this next modification might be a total waste of money, but Puig makes a lower fairing for the MT-10. It's basically like a belly pan fairing and supposedly it offers better aerodynamics. Now, I'll have to test this out when it actually comes in and we get it installed onto the bike, but I can't help it how cool that thing looks. And if it helps with the aerodynamics, what that's gonna get you is better gas mileage over long term. Because if you're cutting through wind better, you don't have as much force exerting on the front of the motorcycle. And from what I've heard a lot of you guys tell me, and I've noticed while riding this bike, the MT-10 is a freaking gas hog. So anything I can do to help the gas mileage on it be better in a long distance situation, less gas stops mean I can get to my destinations quicker and spend less money. So. It could be a crock of crap, but 
I wanna try out that Puig lower fairing and just see how it goes. Could be a total wash though. Now, as you guys can tell, we have a ton of plans to modify the MT-10 and you're probably wondering, well, Chase, what's the mountain setup? Well, the mountain setup I want to wait on until I get a lot of these modifications on and I test them out and I find out which ones actually work the best and that way I can be like, okay, do I need that medium windscreen for the mountain setup or can I just use the race, race wind screen, race wind screen, race wind screen. If I need to use the race windscreen for the mountain days or do I need more wind protection with that medium setup? So I'm gonna wait till I get a lot of these mods in, get them installed, test them out. I'll bring you guys through the entire process, but down the road, I'll let you guys know what my like everyday mountain setup is. And then, you know, if we're doing the track setup, we do a specific stuff. If we're doing long distance, we add those on. Now, the cool thing about YouTube is that this is my idea for my build plans for my MT-10. If you have an MT-10 at home and you've done some modifications that worked out really well, freaking let me know in the comments, dude, and I can grab that stuff because, you know, I'm self-quarantined, can't really do anything right now, and I'm just waiting. So if you guys got some ideas, I would freaking love to hear them, and maybe you can help change the course of the build. Quick note, if you guys are watching this video right when it came out, there is one more chance to win that Panigale down there. So we'll have a link down below. Uh, I'll say like, win the Panigale. You guys can win this thing. We're actually giving it away to one of the people that support the build. So you guys can go over and check that out. But if you don't care about Panigales, MT10. So uh, I'm gonna go take some allergy medicine before the pollen absolutely crushes me more than it already has. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you got to this point, make sure to hit that link Oh my god. Let me know in the comments down below what your favorite mod is that I talked about down below in the comments. Make sure to hit that like button if you have gotten to this point in the video and I am going to go take medicine before this pollen absolutely kills me. You guys stay safe out there and quarantine yourself. It's, it's the best thing we can do and wash your freaking hands and don't touch your face. All those things. Please stay safe people. We're in a crazy world right now and just these small things can really help out. Outro crew, for one, love you guys long time because you are in the outro crew. And by getting to the outro crew, you guys help the YouTube algorithm say, hey, more people should watch these videos. Coronavirus plus moving was not the best move. Uh, it has been stressful. So uh, just give me some love in the comments is what we need for this, uh, for this video because we need that energy. Let me know what you're doing while on self-quarantine. I'm going to go edit this video and, uh, and just be more quarantined. <laughs> Later, guys.